UEFA Champions League games played on Wednesday. Uh, in Portugal, Barcelona lost by three goals to Norton. Their first, uh, their second loss in the UEFA Champions League. This is they've now lost. Uh, they are without a win in the UEFA Champions League for five games in a row since 1997. That was the last time they embarked on such uh, on, uh, a negative run. What do you make of Barcelona in the UEFA Champions League this season? Barcelona generally in this season are not doing very very fine, and you know like poor start of the season, not being able with according to UEFA Champions League start now, they are yet to register a shot on target in the Champions League this season. So that shows how bad they have been. So they are not really in good form and good shape at the moment. So it's, it's as bad as it is. And when you look at uh, the team, the manager is currently under pressure and he continues saying he has the backing of his player. And after the game in Portugal, you have the likes of uh, Frankie de Jong coming out to back the manager and the likes of Sergio Busquets, also, who is also the captain of the team and a senior figure in the, Barcel in the Barcelona team. You have those kind of players supporting the manager and the manager, this is not the, uh, sacking the manager is not the solution. Do you think, do you agree with these players that sacking the manager is not the solution? I want to agree with the player that sacking the manager would not be the solution. I won't, and I won't want to agree like sacking the manager. To me, sacking the manager is just going to change the atmosphere around the club. Like That's the right. fans are calling out that he must he go. The sad. management, we heard what John Lapota said in one week ago that you understand how the Barcelona fans feel or something like that, and they will hit to their to the to they will listen to their they have heard their intentions and they know they know what to do so and we, as it is the results are not even getting better if it will be like they are still getting some things like we, then you can say that the managers will, will stay so on the temporary fix of it i believe the manager should go so that you can have the temporary you can have the, the atmosphere, atmosphere like you know sure. pressure it will release pressure and everything but when you are thinking about the long run the long run like uh, to me, I just see Barcelona changing coach and changing managers in the next five years. And that will not, of course, uh, change the current situation of the club. But, but when you look at uh, things right now, uh, Spain released their national team squad for the next international games on on Thursday, and then Barcelona 17-year-old midfielder Pablo Gavira was uh, in the list that was released by coach Luis Enrique, uh, a player that is yet to make 300 minutes of senior football for 300 minutes, not up to 300 minutes, and being called to the international level. Is this a positive for Barcelona or just another uh, distraction? I've seen it on social media, like their fans, like their fans are being overwhelmed or excited. they are happy, excited, like, oh, they are getting recognition. Yeah, recognition or something. But if you ask me, that's bad. Like, that's, I don't... I, I, congratulations to Pablo Gavira, like, but when you have a 17 years old, who is here to make up to 300 to, minutes? Who is here to make 300 appearance. minutes, like, register one assist, one of the seven passes so far this season, and getting uh, a call to the, to the Spain team. team, like, uh, that shows, that's, uh, to me, I will question the future of Barcelona and that of Spain itself, because I was... What are they? Uh, was um, Enrique trying to tell us that there are no midfielders that are better in the league? Like for and Spain. what is the merit for like calling these players? Exactly. When you have the likes of Inaki, when you have the likes of Asensio, and they are not being called to the national team, and you have the likes of 17 years old. 17 years old, yeah. I'm not concerned about you. If they are good enough, they are good old enough. enough. But when you talk about, I don't see, it's, to it, me, it's not, not merit. He hasn't made any impact at when you look at it's nothing at all. on that 300 minutes of and senior that, team that, that shows an impact. That that will affect Barcelona. That, because look at Pedri now. Look at Pedri. To me, like, there is this argument about something just being plain or anything. People will say it's not being spectacular or something. It's not being, it's not like, okay, how many assists so far? We are just counting the number of games or something, or seven or something. How many assists? How many goals? Like, what are the how many what significant are, how contributions? How many significant contrib contribution? Okay, just run and every other thing. And these are the thing. It's Eighteen years old national team, and so these are the thing that we are Barcelona. We have because all those boys. They are, I'm not saying they they'll are not be giving the manager problems because will be, they'll be looking at the recognitions and they are getting. Barcelona fans even calling for um, um, Put it out, you should be like the only midfielder, you should be irregular on in it. And team. you now ask, like, even when you want to rebuild or something, will you just change the 
extra uh, you change the complete oh, yes. oh, and overnight and everything and, like, it, and you expect you want to compete or anything imagine when you have gavi and Gavi and, and Pedri come uh, and Pui Pui in midfield. In midfield, when they are competing with the likes of uh, Dimitri and Goretzka or Bayern Munich, or maybe they are in midfield of uh, the likes of Pogba, Fernandez, Fernandez and of Manchester, of Manchester United, or we are the likes of Kante, Kante Kovai, Son, Iguez, Jogio in Chelsea. So these are things like experience, quality wise, and every other thing. I don't see them making any impact. All right, and um. Uh, look at the game. Uh, by, uh, Bayern Munich. Uh, they defeated Dynamo Kiev. Five goes to nothing in the in that group. Also, ba Bayern Munich are five uh, six points uh, from two games. Power Benfica having four points from two games also, and Barcelona with no points so far in the Champions League this season. Another one is Manchester United. Last minute winner by Cristiano Ronaldo sealed a two one victory for them at the Old Trafford Stadium against Villarreal. Their first ever victory against the Spanish side. And well, as much as um it was a very, very exciting atmosphere for Manchester United at the ninth uh, the full time whistle in Old Trafford. But when you look at things, I I believe there is just um, a thin line between that atmosphere and the one that happened against Aston Villa in the weekend. The game was tied and heading into the final minutes and it's the, the winning goal fell to Aston Villa and fortunately for Manchester United on Wednesday, yeah, the winning goal fell to them. Do you think don't you think uh, Man United are risking a lot this season? This this what we are saying, like we have been saying this for, for weeks now, like and you know it's uh, to me it's just down to the United RH or something like that. You look at it when you look at the quality of player and every other thing like I, in the last two seasons or last three seasons, the issue when uh, Leguna Soja was appointed Manchester United manager, the issue we are like, ah, it was the defense or anything like that. You get Maguire to that team, 80 million, get Wambisaka, 50 million. And, and the level of investment is summer also. We still see Varen coming for 30, uh, 38 million with add-ons and every other thing. And you still see that there's still a loophole, like they are not that compact. It's not a fortress. It's not what. You can't compare what Jurgen Klopp has done with Van Dijk and, you know, people coming into that team with what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has done with that team. And they are investing, but it's just down to the hierarchy. It's just down to the hierarchy. Like, I don't... Because when we, we just keep on saying this and saying this all over again and, you know, it's down to them to do the everything. But I don't see... They are not... To me, they might be fourth in the Premier League this season. To me, they are not convincing enough so far. All right. And it was evident in, in Manchester United last five games, they've struggled to win two times and lost three times. This weekend, they face Everton at the Old Trafford Stadium. Let's look out for that one. And another one, Chelsea, they were beaten by Juventus in Turin uh, in the UEFA Champions League. One goal to nothing scored by Federico Chiesa. Uh, Chelsea are now winless in the last three games for games ending in 90 minutes and they've considered in all of the three goals Chelsea have been known as a, a team that defend uh, solidly and they rarely concede but unfortunately in the last uh, three games they've conceded and yet to keep yet to win a game this weekend they come up against um, Southampton a, a, a team that they've not beaten in their last three games why do you see Chelsea getting back to form this time around? I think that need, that win is actually they actually need to win like to prove something. You know when they are not getting results, they are the European champion presently. But you know that one, it's, even if it is was yesterday, the people will say it is in the past, like of in course. the future now. So and let's do so. They need a win in this weekend to maintain the big statement like oh we are still in the league or any other thing and we are still there. So. They didn't need that one to prove, prove points. All right, and uh, let's move to the Europa League now and discuss. Leicester City were beaten uh, yesterday by Lagos or so one goal to nothing. They are now winless in their first two games in the UEFA Europa League. This is in one point from two games. And then in their group also, uh, Napoli were beaten at home by Spartak Moscow. Three goes to two. Uh, those two seems the favourites before the start of the competition. But unfortunately, they are now both on one point each and then their opponents both and the other oppositions in the group both on four points do you see those two still making it out of those group uh, out of the group uh after the completion of group games uh, to me i believe we still have four games left in 
in the group. In the group, and I believe they will come close. They will come close, like maybe one or something like that. Leicester are not really having a good quite of season. Like in the last six games now, they have just won. September was actually even bad for them. They won once only in September and they lost everything. So, and they drew one like, and they had to. I don't know. I don't actually. How I have much expectation for Leicester for them City, this season, isn't it? considering the signing and the, the, and the, and the players in and the ranks. The players like they are, they did very very well last, last season, season winning the FA Cup, beating Chelsea, and you know uh, as much as more. investing more. I don't know what was happening with Ben and Jarujas this season. And wow. Hopefully, like the season is still early. Maybe they can still chill. Up. Hopefully, they get back to form. And another man we need to talk about is Victor Osime, the Nigerian striker, came on as a substitute last night and then score. Uh, a goal, even if it was just another consolation goal for his side. But he has maintained a good uh, run of form lately and scoring in almost every game he's played recently. And hopefully he can bring that to the national team as he's been called up to the Nigerian national team for the upcoming uh, qualifiers. And let's still talk about a team that has been doing very well in the Europa League this season. Their first appearance, West Ham United. They've won their first two games in the group and they are now on six point, uh, six point top of the group. And they are doing very well. They return back to the winning ways in the league last time out against Leeds United, a 2 1 win. And this, they've been, let's talk about West Ham United in general. West Ham United are doing very, very well. From last season, from last season, they did very, very well. So and when you look at it, it was like the manager that was sacked by Manchester Jack. United. He was not given, he said he was not given time. Look at what he's doing at West Ham United now compared to what Soja is doing with United. Like, we will still come back to United again, and like I said, it's down to the Arachi or something, and like it's down to the Arachi. So, looking at David Moyes, David Moyes, you know, one thing about big clubs is that when you are in a big club, you are under pressure to deliver yeah. like, every, like every game, even everybody wants you to win every win game, all the games. Any, if possible. So, you know, you can't compare the expectation that you have at West Ham. I'm not saying. He's not doing very. They are doing very, very fine. Like they are from last season. I've been following. They have been very, very fine. But I believe it's just more of like they have less expectation and you know they just less come pressure. Less pressure. So. All right, let's look at another man who is making waves right there. Even if he has not hit the ground running in the Premier League, Harry Kane yesterday scored a hat trick, becoming the first player ever to score a hat trick in the UEFA Europa Conference League, the new UEFA uh, League. He scored a hat trick against Mora after coming on as a substitute. 19 minutes hat trick uh, to give Tottenham a 5 1 win in that match, becoming the first player to score a hat trick in the UEFA Champions League, the UEFA Europa League, and the Europa Conference League. Con- congratulations to Harry Kane. But we don't need to talk much about Harry Kane. I mean, goals without trophies. He wanted to leave Tottenham in the summer and wasn't allowed and all about still delivering for uh, Tottenham Hotspur when he gets the chance. They will be in action in the Premier League this weekend. Hopefully, they are hoping to get back to winning with the face Aston Villa uh, at at the Villa Park. Yes, at the Villa Park, Aston Villa will be playing against Tottenham Hotspur. And Aston Villa also they beat Manchester United recently and drew against Chelsea, even if they lost out in the final of the uh, in the round three of the Carabao Cup to Chelsea on penalties coming up against Aston Villa uh, Tottenham Hotspur who are looking to return to winning with you see Tottenham getting the maximum three points against Villa it seems to be a tough test for both sides like and Aston Villa are trying to prove something like I could follow the Smith um, interview interview with, with, uh, post uh, oh. pre-conference when they want to face United uh, and he was saying something like they will, they really want to keep a clean sheet against Christian Ronaldo and the likes and they got it and they said he even said something like you they will give them problem like they did to Chelsea or something and it was they did very they well. did very they very well, well. even I getting maximum they, points. I think they were so I believe they will have that morale and they will have that energy, confidence. they will have that confidence that oh and coupled with the fact that Tottenham and Ospo are not even doing very very doing well, very well this season. So yes. I believe they will to me he might end up a draw game. All right, that's a big one coming up right there at the Villa Park. If the match will be coming up on Sunday, uh, Aston Villa against Tottenham Hotspur and Roma, just Mourinho's Roma. They are also in the Europa Conference League. They uh, defeated their opponent Zoya by three goals to nothing. Tammy Abraham also getting on the score sheet in that one. And the uh, squad for the English, uh, the three Lions was released on Thursday, and Tammy Abraham was missing again. 
Uh, remembering what Jose Mourinho said about him changing the national team and now he's in fine form but not being called to the national team. Like I, we said it the other time that, yeah, that to compete, I don't know, even if he's going to score 40 goals this season, I don't believe, you know, the issue of England, I don't believe you can just drop a hurricane like that. Like, every, every of England, one of every of England uh, strikers are in fine form too. Look at the way, uh, Cavalier and I believe everybody knows, even form is just temporary, class is permanent. Yeah. Everybody knows how dangerous Hurricane can be. So I, it's just, it will look absurd to just drop Hurricane for Tammy Abraham overnight or something, or maybe just drop Cavalier or something, couple with the fact that he's not even playing in their local league again. Right. Also, uh, let's take a look at the features, the big ones coming up this weekend in the Premier League. Le we talked about Manchester United. They will be facing Everton at the Old Trafford Stadium. The first kickoff of the Premier League season uh, of the Premier League this game week. You know, people thought about the early kickoff in the Premier League that these games, uh, you know, they're not balanced. Sometimes they are uh, the results go the way we don't expect them. Uh, a very, very big one for Manchester United after the defeat last time out in the Premier League. They want to get back to winning with and now facing Everton. Rafa Benitez side, they've been in good form this season and also among the top teams in the Premier League, on the Premier League look so far this season. Do you see Manchester United uh, see, uh, see, getting back to winning with in the match like against uh, Everton? I won't, say, I won't see them getting back to winning with when you, like, like, when you have the likes of Christian Ronaldo in the team or anything like that. To me, I was even expe I was nobody was even expecting that they would even win Villarreal couple with the way they played. Of course, and uh, they had to get that win at the last minute. So to me, it's an open game, and anything can happen. All right, um, you know we have um our uh, Real Ferdinand also saying Cristiano Ronaldo tested him saying. Uh, he know he didn't play well, but he believed he always know he, he knew he was going to score in that game against Villarreal. And fortunately for Man United and maybe Ole Gunnar Soldier, he was able to produce a last minute winner uh, to relieve tensions at the Old Trafford Stadium. Arsenal will be playing Brighton. Uh, Arsenal have fortunately for them they've returned back to winning ways and they've won their last four games in all competition. This time on Saturday evening they will be traveling to the Amex to face Brighton and all uh, and over beyond another side who have been very very fantastic this is they've been doing very well Grand Potter's side and when you look at the numbers between both sides Arsenal and Brighton they've won two each in each of their last four meetings Brighton winning the first two and the last two was won by Arsenal and both sides looking to continue their uh, fine form and coming up against each other on, on Saturday at the Amex what do you think that will transpire in that match? To me, I believe us now will go through on this one. They will get a edge over Brighton, considering the fact that they are, they are playing very well at the moment. Brighton are a good side too, and they are, they, they are in fine form like this mm -hmm. season. And but I believe Arsenal would be able to. They just need to just continue, you know, continue with, what with they are their doing. form, and you know when you even get. When they win on Saturday, it's going to be five for five in their last five games. So and they will that's move, like they will move like, to twelve. And I believe that mm -hmm. exactly twelve point and they would, they it's just like regaining that confidence and everybody mm -hmm. in the team, everybody team, the team will just be like, oh, everything is working fine now. We can challenge for something this season. All right, and uh, Arsenal, unfortunately for them, they will be without midfielder Granit Xhaka. He's been ruled out for mm -hmm. up to. Three months after picking up an injury in their 3-1 win over Tottenham Hotspur in the North London Derby. Same thing for, Bra for Brighton and over beyond. They were having a list of players on the uh, hand for them when they face Arsenal. Yeah, Yves Bissouma has been very fantastic for them this season. But missed out the last time out against Crystal Palace. It will be a doubt for this weekend against Arsenal. Another player is Adam Webster, uh, Enoch Mwepu and of course Azati are all on the sideline for uh, the host this weekend they will be missing for the art of action and another one manchester city they will be traveling to the Anfield stadium to face liverpool the biggest game this weekend in the low the whole of europe when you talk about the premier league the best team, uh, the best league in the world and the top two teams in the premier league for the past three seasons they will be facing up at the Anfield stadium this weekend pep Guardiola against jogging club once again and you know a lot have been said about those two in the premier league the rivalry is building up and this one will not be an exception what do you uh, foresee in this one uh, it's going to be a very very big game and you know everybody every of your manager will bring their a 
a card to the match to just try to get press a, the advantage press the advantage over each other and to me the noise at that feet an advantage in Liverpool. Of course. Like it has always been an advantage and I yeah, Liverpool are doing very, very fine this season. Yes. Couple with the likes of Mohamed Salah in fine form. Yes. So I'll be expecting a goal from awesome. the Egyptian. Right. And, and you know Masti coming from from the defeat, the defeat of PSG and the Bordeaux, they, they get the statement, well. they played very, very well and you were able to get a win against Chelsea. Chelsea in the weekend. So it's just an open game. Like Alright, let's watch out for that one. And will be uh, a doubt for that match is Trent Alexander. Yeah. I know the, uh, the English defender missed out of action in the UEFA Champions League win at Porto and he's expected to sit out of this one. We'll continue to look if it will be available for the match. And let's take a look at Barcelona who are not really doing well. well. They will be playing Atletico Madrid in the La Liga this weekend. Ah, looking to return to winning ways at the Wanda Metropolitan uh, Metropolitano against Diego Simeone's side, uh, Simeone side, who have had a missed start to the season. They were defeated last time out in the league, and they will be all. They will also be looking to get back to winning ways. And Barcelona uh, defeated Levante by three goals to nothing in the league last time out before be being beaten by the same scoreline by Benfica midweek in the UEFA Champions League. Both sides will be looking for the maximum points when they face off with. Uh, when the face off at the Metropolitano and manager, uh, manager Ronald Koma will not be on the sideline again for Barcelona when they play Atletico Madrid. Let's take a look at the match coming up there. To me, Ronald Koma not being on the sideline is <laughs> like a relief <laughs> for, for himself, for himself, <laughs> and he's going to because we heard something like it was, um. This the assistant that was that did the set up and against uh, Levante and they were able to come up with a with very very good win and everything. so he's not going to be on the sideline and you know being on the sideline it was one that uh, in against Levante they changed to four three three and in the Champions League they were Koma switched back to three five two yeah, which it didn't go well and it well. backfired all like and everybody well. is coming after him again so. To me, is, that's why I said it's going to be a relief for, for him for playing him against the tough in, Atletico Madrid and side. And it's not going to be on the sideline. Although anything that happens in the in game is still going to bounce back. Bounce back on. But you know, you won't have to have the problem of selection. Oh, he was the one that made the selection. Of he was course. anything. So I believe it's going to be a relief. And I, I don't want to... Atletico too, they can just go off and the everything. Game. Although they are the defending champion. And, and when you look at the To team, me, the Atletico... Side. Atletico are not a team that really really do very very well like that like one zero they are not that kind of thing that maybe they will, I will say they will come and attack you or they will play oh, you or something like that but they just know how to just squeeze out result and get this result out so i believe maybe it's going to be a, a, a open game considering their last and uh, their last five appearances and uh, which oh. atletico had better advantage all right advantage. Um, and then Real Madrid, another big side in the La Liga, they will be facing Espanyol away from home this weekend on Sunday. That, that match will be coming up on Sunday. And in the I Italian Serie A, it is the Turin Derby. Torino will be at home against Juventus. And Sassuolo will also be at home against Inter. Fiorentina uh, travel to old, uh, to Napoli. Uh, Napoli are the, are the best, so far, by far the best team in the league this season, even if they are not doing very well in Europe. They've won all their games so far and are currently top of the of the standings there. And the biggest one in the Serie A this weekend, that will be the clash between AC Milan and Atalanta. At, uh, AC Milan travel to Bergamo to take on the Atalanta side, who uh, have been... Well, they've been doing very well this season. They even won their last match in the UEFA Champions League by one goal to nothing. And they will be looking to continue their winning run against the uh, Rossoneri, who, uh, who have also started the season very well and they are not doing very well in Europe. It was unfortunate for them. They lost their match in the Champions League against Atletico Madrid. But that disappointment coming up, uh, on the back of that disappointment, maybe uh, most of them, uh, the decisions of the referee costing, costing them the, the game at uh, against Atletico Madrid, but coming up, coming into this one on the back of that, uh, do you th think Juven, uh, AC Milan will have a point to prove? Definitely, they have a point to prove in the weekend. Like, they are, they are, if you look at them in the in the um, league this season, they are doing very well. They are doing very well. And Atlanta too, they are doing very fine. It's also drive and I believe it's just 
It's just, it's just it's going to be an entertaining game. So. All right. Um, let's take a look at the last uh, league we'll be uh, talking about this weekend. That is uh, PSG Paris Saint Germain. They will be traveling to Rennes uh, and Lionel Messi after scoring his first goal for PSG in the UEFA Champions League win over Ma over Manchester City. Will be looking for his first uh, goal in this in the league on this weekend when they travel to Lille. Uh, when they travel to rain and hopefully you'll we'll be able to get that and the biggest one there this weekend that is Lille against Marseille and we'll be looking to the results and when we return on the next edition of the program we'll talk about more on the post-match reaction and everything uh, I'm a for Labi Kendi and um, I've done this uh, in the company of Tumingino Oluwatobi thank you very much enjoy the rest of your day <laughs>